Hello everybody, I'm Kimball Hooker. Welcome to the Kimball Hooker Show. So glad to have you here, you guys tuning in. Um, I have a very special guest, actually two special guests here today. Well, um, we're just gonna start from the beginning and uh, talk about you know, how they started, how they got into the music industry and how they arrived where they are now. Um, but first, I want you guys to subscribe. I want you guys to share and like. Um, Kimball.show is exactly where you guys can tune in and check out some of our other interviews with other musicians. And you guys will find it amazingly interesting. I always do. Um, there's so much to learn about where our, in, our musicians come from and where they got where they are. Um, but today, I want to dig right in and just dig right in from the very beginning. Our special guest today, how are you guys feeling? Good. Good. Okay, Fletcher Baker and Billy Eisner. I want to talk a little bit more about how you guys got started from the beginning. This, just right from the beginning. How'd you guys uh, meet? We were in a um, just a singing group. Remember just some pals in Willow Glen? Yeah. yeah that, that's not how we met. That's how we met musically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was way, way before that. Billy yeah. and I, both our kids went to the uh, uh, same uh, uh, preschool. Preschool. Thank yeah. you. Uh, up on uh, Black Road, uh, Rosie and Dylan. Okay, uh, the and, Red uh, Schoolhouse. So Billy and I and our wives got together with the kids, and uh, and then Billy tells me that we played guitar together back then. That'd be 25 years ago. Oh, wow, okay. And, uh, but I don't remember. You don't remember? No. You were there. I, yeah, I was there, <laughs> but I wasn't, I guess. And uh, so then we met uh, working out at, right here at Los Gatos Athletic Club, and we kind of stayed in touch. And then uh, one day I just got the bug. I, I just... I needed to, instead of just playing guitar for my kids, I needed to play music for people, for myself and for people. I needed to join a band. Like a band. Yeah. Okay. And that's when I ran into Billy playing uh, with Johnny Neary. I saw him playing with Johnny Neary. I said, hey, Billy, how you doing? Let's get together. And right. he said, oh, okay. So we got together at a friend's house in Willow Glen, and like Billy says, and we had to, we, we started singing and playing, and we realized, well, we sound pretty good singing together. Maybe we'll get a third voice and do some harmonies. Okay. So, Billy invited his friend Judd Merkland into the band, and then we had three-part harmonies going, and we worked on those for years and put it together. That's nice. I love three-part harmonies. Oh, love yeah. three-part harmonies. Oh, yeah. So let's take it a little bit step before. Before, how did you come across playing the guitar? Well, for me, yeah. um, I uh, I took guitar. I, well, the Beatles appeared on the Ed Sullivan Show when I was eight years old, and that is all anybody could talk about for a while. So my friends and I decided we wanted to learn how to play guitar and be rock stars. Wow, at, okay. At uh, eight years old. Right. By the time we were 10, we actually got around to getting lessons, and uh, uh, that didn't go well because we had a classical guitar uh, teacher trying to teach us how to play classical guitar, and we're oh, like, oh, didn't miss. We want to do rock and roll, and right. he's like, oh, no, 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 not until you learn this stuff. So anyway, that didn't happen. Then when I was 18 years old, I met a buddy in high school who was a fantastic musician, and he taught me how to play guitar. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And so that's when I started, and we were in a few bands together in our 20s, and then when I got married and had kids, that was it for rock and roll for a while. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Family took over. Family life. Yeah, until I met Billy. So. Gotcha. Billy, yeah. how did all this change? What happened? How did all this come about? Where the change? Where did the change come from? Where the music and the band kind of like met each other? Um. Sorry. What? But where did all? How, like, how did the change happen? So. It, it it was casual at first, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. oh. Well, oh, it, that was a slow process. We we were we were just totally casual when we were in the Willow Glen singing group. There was probably about six guys. You know, any time there'd be anywhere between three and four. And Fletcher, um, Judd, and I, we we could play you know instruments de decently enough, so we knew we could start a band. Cool. So we just started kind of on the side, our own little project right. along with this one. And then what we got. We were doing mostly folk music. Okay. Just kind of sing along folk music, which is what we wanted to do. Right. It was just the three of us. We, All right. Our dream was to play at a coffee shop, you know, and get tips and just, you know, sip coffee. And, right. You know, that's, right. That's right. What, that right. was right. our dream, right? And uh, we got a couple gigs doing, uh, like, where were I getting Campbell on the street? And we just played a couple rock and roll tunes just for the fun of it, right? And, you know, the people started coming around, right? Gotcha. And so we got a couple gigs from that. And so that's kind of why we merged from or transitioned from folk music to rock and right, performing right. as opposed to just, 
you know, folk music. Okay. We still do our folk music. Right, gotcha. So you intertwined it with the rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Yeah. How did you guys come up with the band name? <laughs> Um, yeah, Billy, how did we come up with the band name? <laughs> we just, it Uh-oh. has nothing to do with the song. <laughs> it's an appellation. Um, we, we, we were at a jam, Judd and I were at a jam session, and we might have had a couple beers. And um, some, it, someone was singing Chain of Fools, and we just looked at each other and said, what a name for a band. You know, Chain of Fools, you know, Chain of Fools. I mean, you know, Chain of Fools, is a, it's a song, right? Oh, right, right, right. But, 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 but the title, your band, has nothing to do with Aretha Franklin, Chain of, none of that. None of that. It, no. Okay, so sorry to get it, It's just self-deprecating. Yeah, we just like For it. fun. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. That's cool. But I mean, it's catchy. It's cool. Yeah. You know, it, it, I don't think it ever is like not relevant, right? It's yeah. always like 50 years from now, that's, it would still sound yeah. good. It's like Chain of Fool. What do you mean? What are you talking about? You right, know what right. I mean? Like it's a catchy, cool, yeah. so it looks good. It looks really written out and it sounds good to say. And you, it's a song too. And we work with the fool business, you know. Anybody want to be a fool and join, you know. Yeah, yeah, you can be, come on up and be a fool. Uh, and we figured, you know, if we called ourselves the fools, right. then if we were able to perform above the level of a fool, people would be, pot, they'd be like, oh, yes. we'd exceed expectations. Oh, That's a good got thing. It. Okay, <laughs> got it, got it, got it. Okay, so now you guys are playing out right now. How did your band form? Like, how did you come across all your musicians that make, you know, your bass player, your drummer, your everybody? Well, we play everything except the drums. And so we usually have a, Hired hand for a drummer. Oh, gotcha. Okay, well, hired. You know, we've hand. had we had a permanent member for a while, but then he went on to different things. So now we've got a new member, Norm, Norm our, okay. our drummer, and he's very good. Pretty rock, good. Rock yeah. solid. Rock yeah. solid. Yeah, as a yeah. drummer should be. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's cool. Yes. And then, how do you guys create your set list? Like, what songs? How do you pull all that together? Well, that's been a really uh, group effort. You know, Billy had his ideas. A lot of blues related stuff, a lot of Van Halen, a okay. lot of really challenging guitar work because he's phenomenally talented as a lead guitarist. And uh, he brings that into the band and nobody, I mean, w- you know, when we play those songs and Billy starts wailing on guitar, I mean, everybody stops because you don't hear that very much with local bands. So, um, and then I brought a lot of my, my interests in, uh, you know, Stones, Beatles, Petty, um, and then there's a, just a lot of variety we have in our set list. And it's just songs that we like and we thought were cool. And like Don't Fear the Reaper by Blue Oyster right. Cult. You know, that's a challenging tune, right? And it took a lot of work to kind of make it sound okay, you know? But people appreciate it. When you take a tough song and you put it together and you make it sound okay, people really enjoy that song. You know, you, you were t- you're touching on something right now that actually was my lead-in question for, my, for, for you guys next. Okay, because I'm a musician as well. I find it very intriguing and very interesting on a musician's approach on how they take a well-known band, a popular band, a, a popular song that has a lot of instrumentation and they downsize it and make it their own. Yes. Yeah, you, you, re, you reduce you know. it to its elements and find out what those elements Talk are. Talk to us about that, and, yeah. And build it back up again. So you have to... I identify, you know, the chord structure, and sometimes you even want to change that. But you also listen to the orchestrations if there's anything like that, and see what. Pick out the notes and build them as best you can on two guitars, or maybe with vocals. And um, it, uh, it's an artistic thing. You Absolutely. Know? It's like, what am, what am I doing? Well, you have to define it. You know, am I trying to reproduce what they're trying to do? Am I trying to, you know, come up with something different? You know, you have to know what your plan is before you play a song. You know, sometimes you do it completely differently. We do our own versions of some of a lot of songs, and a lot of them, we take them as like a piece by Chopin. It's gotta be played note per note, and the challenge is trying to replicate it. Now, now you still have artistic license when you replicate. Right. You know, you can listen to different versions of people playing beautiful piano music, and you listen to guy A and guy B, they're all playing the exact same notes with the same articulation, but they're two different sounds. Right. Same thing with rock and roll. If you hear Stevie Ray Vaughan play the solo like out of what you just mentioned, what did, um, uh, Don't Fear the Reaper, mm. that's a challenging solo. He's gonna sound different than the original guy, but he'll sound great. Right. Right. So you, you, the, the challenge is to take it and do it with your own style or just do your own thing, you know, come up with your own solo. You know, this is the funnest thing for me in being in this band is the creative part of it. There are bands who go out and try to replicate exactly 
the song as it was on the album, the original version. Correct. They right. do their best. Right. And some are, do pretty well and some don't do so well. Um, we decided, uh, let's take the song and maybe let's mess with it a little bit. Let's do like Billy will do keyboard, the keyboard parts on his guitar. Um, and, you know, I'll throw in a little harp, a little uh, harmonica here and there just to add a little color and flavor. Um, <laughs> Judd will uh, use his mouth as a, uh, it sounds like a <laughs> trumpet. You know, a flute. And, yeah, yeah. You know, a flute. Okay. A f- yeah. We, we, lit- we literally do that in uh, a Mamas and Papa songs. You know, a '60s hippie song with a flute. California mm-hmm. Dreaming. Comes yeah. up, meh, 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 it on his nose, <laughs> and it sounds good. Yeah. Uh, so, but but the, for me, the most fun part of being in this band has been um, the creative part of it. When we're sitting at a practice, uh, we're coming up with ideas. How do we make this sound good here? How do we change it, but make it ours, but be, you know, uh, true to the song. And uh, we've done that with at least half our tunes. I bet, yeah. for a small band, right? Yeah. yeah. And, okay, so for my next question is like, it, I know it's a three piece, but like uh, for a band, how do you replicate the bass with two guitar players? We've oh, got, well, we got a bass player. Yeah. You have a bass player. Judd, uh, yeah, Judd Merklin's our bass player. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And okay. our tenor. Yeah. And your tenor too, yeah. as well. And That's the three piece, yeah. the, the harmonies. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We all play it. guitar and sing, and then the drummer doesn't sing. Got it, and so there, and there's no keyboards. Correct. Correct. Okay. And so the horns would be, I guess, when you can change the instrumentation or the sound yeah. of the guitar, right? To yeah. kind of emulate or yeah, but, um, not so much get sound like a saxophone, but the sound just to get the essence of the of the chord sounds. Got it. So that the the experience audio the audio experience is the same. So you still get the same chords and the same melody lines. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I looked at some of those videos and I was like, oh my God, these people are dancing. Those people are clapping and stomping their feet and they're having a damn good time. And it's like, there's like there's, there's so few guys up there. Smaller bands, you know, they have to be more creative, you know, mm-hmm. a lot more creative and a lot more, um, their approach has to be like, you can't just run on stage and do something like that. Mm-hmm. They have to really pre-plan something like, and the creativity and has to be through the roof. Mm-hmm. And we know? don't use any uh, the pre-programmed music where diametrically opposed to that it's all live it's all live live. so everything's all live there's no pre-programmed anything you're not playing to tracks or nothing like that you won't you won't hear a horn and not see a horn yeah right if you hear it somebody played it yeah yeah Yeah. oh that's cool that's cool yeah billy plays saxophone by the way yeah yeah but real saxophone yeah yeah yeah. tenor sax and alto sax yeah gotcha yeah listen we're gonna take a short break and we're gonna come right back and uh, finish up our interview all right Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Kimball Hooker. I want you guys to like, share, and subscribe to this video. And we'll be right back with our special guest. Thank you to the Los Gatos Community Foundation for their continued support of KCAT Public Media. Because of groups like the Los Gatos Community Foundation, KCAT has been able to inspire, educate, entertain, and inform our community through the magic of television and digital media for over 38 years. Thank you. We're back, we're live here, um, here in Las Gatas. I'm Kimball Hooker, your host. I want you guys to go to Kimball.show and just make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. We're gonna continue with our interview here with Billy Eisner and Fletcher Baker. How you guys doing? Right. Yeah. Cool. Having fun. Cool. All right. Where are you guys mostly playing at? Well, I'd say uh, South Bay. South, South Bay. Bay. Yeah. We, okay. We've, we've played over the hill in Santa Cruz at a few venues over there. All right. Uh, but mostly, um, well, we played at Number One Broadway and Charlie's. Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chuck. Uh, it was great when they reopened back, having live music again. Um, Little Lou's in Campbell, uh, Tesoras in Campbell. All the hot spots. Those are those are fun places. Yeah, they're really yeah. fun places. Yeah, there's a few more. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Who books you guys? Well, I do. I do the booking. You do the booking. Yeah. Okay, got it. Is there like um, an email or is there like a website where you can have people tune in and go to and maybe Shh. get bookings? So you have you guys have fans that are checking this out now. So yeah, we want to uh, sure. If you want to learn more about the band, it's our website's www.chainoffools.net. Chainoffools.net. Dot net. Okay. And. Uh, my email is fbaker at savills.us, S-A-V-I-L-L-S dot U-S, if you want to email me. Okay, cool, cool beans. Yeah. And where can you guys be found, all your music? Where, what platforms? Uh, Facebook. Just uh, look, look up Chain of Fools. 
on Facebook and you'll see us. Okay. Yeah. And, and our web and our website. And on the website. Website as well, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but as far as like, uh, are you guys on YouTube? Or are you guys? Not much. We haven't posted much on YouTube. We did a little bit during the uh, pandemic. Okay. You know, when we were streaming. Okay. But we weren't very good at that. I think other people do it. <laughs> yeah. We don't, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. We just, we, 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 we don't, we don't work that hard. <laughs> Not that hard. Right, right. <laughs> so basically, um, if, if there are any posts up there, it's other people posting it. Yeah. Yes. Like that. Oh, okay. Exactly. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. gotcha. Okay. Although we did mm -hmm. for that video at the Los Gatos Promenade. Yes. Back in July, which was a super fun gig. We did hire a young fellow, little shout out to Liam Hool for putting that video together um, for us. Uh, so once in a while we, you know, we get somebody to help us out. Cool. Yeah. And what type of venues are you guys more than going for? Like weddings? Do you guys do weddings? Or you guys do, do private parties? We just did a private party in Aptos this weekend. It was okay. a blast. Super fun. Great fun people. Um, yeah. So private parties, weddings, um, corporate events, you know, we're flexible just as long as we can have a place to play and enjoy ourselves and have a good time we're in that's cool is there like a big like a goal that you guys have what are you guys striving for uh the direction of the band yeah you know we just keep trying to get better yeah. uh we we've been working on this now for seven or eight years in the first i'd say three years we put in a ton of time just working on our harmonies and getting our guitar parts down what i what i learned is sometimes you're and your fingers have to do something in a certain rhythm and your voice has to do something in a different true. rhythm. And it's true on bass, it's true with Lily, Billy's lead, it's true with my rhythm. And and that's, you know, when you've got three guitarists who are also the three vocalists, got it. there's a lot of work to get that stuff down right. Right. So we just have tried for years to improve it and we've, we've done a good job improving it, but there's always room for more. Got it. Yeah. Question for you, what are some of your best gigs and some of your not so good gigs. Mm. What makes a good gig to mm. you guys? The audience. The it's crowd. all about the audience. Yeah. Crowd. It really is. Uh, I'm first, and, and when we were first starting out, um, first gig we ever got was at Little Lou's and Campbell. Okay. Yeah, on a Tuesday night. And uh, I think there were three people sitting in there having dinner, watching this new band that was terrible. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they so, were eating really fast. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, after a while, yeah, you know. Then we got a drummer who we thought, wow, you know, this guy, this guy's good. I'll give a shout out to Kevin Coggins. He was our drummer for about five years nice. and uh, recently quit the band about four months ago. Um, but boy, once he joined us, we really became a professional band. Um, and we started getting gigs, and people started showing up, and the name Chain of Fools started getting out there. And now most of the people in our social circles know us. You know, and most of the venues know us. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Cool. That works. I like that. Yeah. So, so basically, you guys are still playing locally. You guys still have like a route. Like, is there like a calendar you guys have? Mm -hmm. There's a calendar on our, on our website. On a website. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Got it. And then, as far as like, um, do you guys ever do any? Um, I want to say like like special like special holidays like any Christmas any. Sure. We've done Halloween event gigs. Mm -hmm. um, not so much Christmas, New Year's. We played a nice, beautiful New Year's Eve party, uh -huh. okay. private party. Um, yeah, sure. Any any event, we're open to it. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Rehearsals. Do you guys rehearse? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Regularly, every week. Every week. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. That's a, that's a, we practice for about three hours, and it's it's serious business. Right. We're not you know popping beers and yapping and talking about sports. We're we're working. By the time we go, by the time we're done, we're tired. Got it, got it. Billy's the musical director in the band. He's the most musically accomplished, proficient individual in the band. And he understands from top to bottom, front to back, what's happening in the song and whose job is to do what. Oh, wow, that's he, big. He can tell you in the middle of what he's doing, which is playing lead and singing a part, he can tell you if I or Judd hit the wrong note or if the drummer did something wrong. He'll just stop and go, you didn't do that right, or you didn't do this right, and we'll go, oh, okay, and we'll figure it out. So Billy leads us through all that stuff. Yeah, that's serious talent right there. Yeah. So and we get along. <laughs> okay. And that's the hard part, because a lot of bands <laughs> try that, and then people get pissy about it, or right. people get upset about that. So you guys are actually friends, too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, 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 that. And we've stayed friends. That's a good <laughs> yeah, dynamic. I think. That's, yeah. <laughs> that is the <laughs> test right there. Yeah. Well, he <laughs> has to agree to it, too. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I, I, I'm... Yeah, I guess Speaking for him, I, I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that works. That works. Yeah. I mean, because a lot of bands they get together and split up, and you know that whole dynamic. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they play well together, but they don't get along. Mm -hmm. Jealousy could be what a number of things, but you guys actually have like that. Never even was the case. I got. I've got absolutely no patience for that kind of life. 
I don't right. want to be in something that like that. Right. You know, I mean, I'm either going to enjoy my bandmates, right. like they're good buddies, and we can joke around, we can have a good time, and we can work hard and make something really cool. Right. Uh, if it wasn't anything short of that, I wouldn't be in it. But that's part of it. That's what makes it. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I, I totally dig that, I, and I get that. That's like the, the, the biggest part of why you're in the band with those guys, with that with those mm -hmm. musicians in particular. Exactly. It, it's the, the, the MP, and you know the funny thing is, people that are watching you guys play, they pick up on that stuff. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the crowd is not stupid. No. You know, they're not no. just listening. That's right. They can tell when there's something that's like, something's not right. That's right. exactly you know, right. They may not tell you that, <laughs> you know, right. or talk to you about that or whatever, but the crowd, right. they sit back and they go, mm. a lot of times when they don't engage with you, they're sitting there and you're like, man, we're killing it right now. Still, you know, a lot of it's like, they can tell that, that tension, mm -hmm. you know, they can tell when something's not right. People yeah. are very perceptive. From Aren't they? From front to back. Very much so. Yeah. I found that out as well, just yeah. being in the business. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. you can say one thing, but your performance tells them something different. Yeah. You know. Yeah. One thing we learned too was, um, you know, we're we're pretty serious, right, about our music. Right. We really, really, really want to do it right, right. and well, extremely well. And um, sometimes you get a little serious, and you're and you're up there, and you're kind of focusing on what you're doing. You're kind of working like this, and and the crowd's out there, and they're kind of going, oh, yeah. But if you just if you're not playing quite as well. But you got a big smile on your face and you're bouncing around, you're having a good time. Right. What's the crowd doing? They feed into They're that. They're having a good time they too. They feed into that. So Absolutely. we learned that. Yeah. We figured that out. So now we, we, we try to, you know, more enjoyment and less perfection. Right. You know? I think when you take them on a musical journey, you know what I mean? Like what you just said about your smile and you're bouncing around, you guys are having fun. I mean, I always <clears> look at it from a standpoint of you never know where these people came from. You know, they could have, something terrible could have happened prior to them. Coming to see you, you right. know, they could have been laid off, at, or fired from their job. They That's could have got right. a divorce, funeral. Who knows, right? Yeah. And they're yeah. like, you know what? I'm tired of being cooped up in the house. I'm going out tonight. Yeah. And then they get there, and you guys are staring at each other like, yeah. why are we here? <laughs> yeah. And it sucks, right? Yeah. Yeah. But when nobody's having fun, nobody's having fun. <laughs> but when they get there, and whether it be a fan or someone that never heard of you, doesn't matter. When you give them that vibe, that fun vibe, and they're like, oh my gosh, like, yeah. I should have came here sooner. Yeah, you know, and yeah. so they really like that connection yeah. they feel, and it's something that's displayed and is felt. You don't have to say a word; just be mm. yourself. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I love that. Yeah, I think another fun part of it for me has been learning that the crowd, you know, especially if they like your music and they yeah. like your band, they kind of want to get a little closer to you. They want to get to know you a little more. Very much so. And so, if you are up there and you just have a thought cross your mind, or you see something interesting, or you see a good dancer, or you say whatever, you just kind of make a little comment. Hey, you know. You like that song? Well, maybe another Almond Brothers tune. Okay, you know, and uh, and the crowd loves to engage with you in that way. So it's they good do. to open Absolutely. up and share yourself. Right. You know? Have you guys ever taken special requests? Oh yeah, we've got a pretty we long set them, list, but we don't do them. I mean, you know, if it's on the list, we'll do it. If it's oh, on the gotcha, list, yeah, gotcha. a special request that's on the list. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> we don't we don't uh, wing it very well. You don't wing it very well. No. Okay, so no, you, we've we've winged it before, but yeah? not too often. Yeah, you know, like there's a lot of easy songs, like a blues <clears throat> song or a, yeah. a, a Chuck Berry song. If someone knows the words, we can do it. Mm -hmm. But you know, someone, do you know the song by Yes? Yeah. Right. And, you know, or yeah. Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Eh, no. mm. Right. How long is your normal set? We typically play two to three hours, sometimes okay. four hours. Okay. Uh, Gardino's, we play six to ten mm -hmm. um, with a couple of big breaks. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a long time to play. Yeah. Four hours is a long time to play. I know what that's like. Yeah. Yeah. I guess like with a, a few 15s in there, a couple of little breaks in there. Yeah. That's a, long, that's a lot of material yeah. Yeah. To, to play for that long. For Oh, you guys are talented. Yeah. Extremely talented. Because the bigger the band, you can hide. Yeah. And mm. it's not so it's it's not so much playing the instrument that's difficult. It's staying focused and happy and cheerful and delivering. While your legs are getting tired yeah. of standing, <laughs> yes. your voice is getting right. hoarse. Weary, we're yeah. getting weary, right? Yeah. You don't want to hear another G seventh chord. And uh well Yeah. You gonna... haven't eaten for a while. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that's the challenge. But uh uh yeah, typically like three hours with a, a break yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a long time to play. We, I tell you, once we get going though, uh, we just have a ball. Right. You know, the music, the, especially if we're if we're playing well, like which is like I'd say five times out of six, we're playing pretty well to really well. Mm -hmm. And uh, when that happens, it's like the 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 train's rolling down the track really well, and you just you can just keep going. Right. We, you can see playing and playing and playing. We, we often don't take breaks yeah. because we don't want to break the momentum. Yeah, we're having oh, fun. Gotcha. Sometimes it's harder. It's like if you're running. 
Yeah, That's you're true. A runner, right? Yeah. If you're running six miles and you stop after four, well, now I got to go, you know, two more miles. It's actually a really good example yeah. too, because I don't stop. You yeah. know, if I if I, I feel I want to, yeah. If, well, yeah. I'm just talking about just running. Like, That's what, what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. A good example, like when I'm running, if I know I want to do 45 minutes and I've already passed 45 minutes. I'll just keep running. Yeah, yeah. I might hit an hour, you know, mm -hmm. I might hit an hour and 10 minutes. Or yeah, that's how it extends Because your... once I break that, anything happens. Your mind changes, you get mm -hmm. into all these different moves. Like, you know what? I don't think I want to do that anymore. <laughs> 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 gotcha. You guys have been a blast just being on the show. I've had a really good time. Is there anything else you guys want to add? No, I just think it's cool that uh, KCAT is here and doing this. Yeah, uh, yeah, thanks yeah. for being so warm and friendly to us and the invitation to come down here. It's uh, it's pretty cool because I knew some guys running KCAT back in the late 80s, early 90s, I think it was. And uh, it's pretty cool to, to see that it's still kicking. Right, right. We're here for the community, definitely, for sure. You nice. guys are definitely a part of that. And thank you guys for coming in and showing KCAT some love. And it, you know what? There's so many people watching here. They learn a lot because not a lot of people know what it's like for the musicians to do what they do. Mm. You know, mm. they see it mm. and they go, oh, that's cool. But what makes it cool, only interviews tell the story. Mm. So now we're going to get some fans, and hopefully they'll share, like, and subscribe. Um, but thank you guys for coming in. Appreciate it. It's been a pleasure, Kimball. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for, for tuning in. Um, I want you guys to like, share, and subscribe. Share this video. Um, and our special guests have been amazing, Billy Eisner and Fletcher Baker. Thank you, and we'll see you guys next time. You just heard the Kimball Hooker Show here on KCAT Radio. Explore all our KCAT original programming at kcat.org slash radio.